Mr. Holmes, we found the sailors from that list you gave us. Well done, Wiggins. Let me see. This is interesting. Let us review. This man is a harpooner, and his initials are PC, the same initials that were found on the tobacco pouch. Wiggins, could you gather some information on one of the sailors that you found? His name is Patrick Cairns. We found Patrick Cairns. Good job, Wiggins. Where is he? He lives in a small furnished dump of a room, but he's always at the Sea Witch pub, where he does arm wrestles for money and drinks. Excellent. Here is your reward. Two guineas. Thank you, sir. If I wish to speak to Cairns without alarming him, I had better dress as a sailor. Now I can approach Cairns and see if he recognizes the pouch. Hello there. Are you Cairns? What do you want? We've heard all about the gambling on arm wrestling here. You seem like the likely sort, and I'm up for it. I start at ten shillings. Suits me. Well, good for you, I reckon. You're stronger than you look. Here's your ten shillings. I'd like to buy you a drink. Good winner as well. That's good. Let's have a drink. You're a good type. Seems you've managed to settle down in life. You've got money, eh? Not all that much. Oh, well. At least you're not as poor as me. Why do you say poor? You're not working. 
I'm a harpooner. But you see, the whalers are rare. They don't pay much. So, as a result, find myself arm wrestling to pay for my drink. A harpooner. Interesting. You've had a lot of adventures, I bet. Ah, of course. It's been a dozen years since I've sailed. I've seen everything. Old Wallace, damn Black Peter, Great Roger, we sailed to the Cape of Good Hope. Black Peter, you say? I've heard rumours about that one. He was the worst of them all. He was a liar, and violent too. Swinging those fists of his around. He was a tyrant, and not much of a captain. At least, not as good as Great Roger. I see. Yes. I was told terrible tales about Black Peter. But you ain't heard the worst. Tell me, and let's have another drink. It was in 1883 that it happened. The August of that year. Peter Carey was captain of the Sea Unicorn, and I was a spare harpooner. We were coming out of the ice pack on our way home. One evening, we saw a little craft that had been blown north. There was only one man on her, and he wasn't a sailor. The crew must have thought that she had foundered, and they made for the Norwegian coast in the dinghy. I guess they all drowned. We took the man on board. And who was he? I don't know. During the crossing, he and the skipper enjoyed some long talks. His baggage was just a tin box. That's strange enough. Aye. Even stranger was that on the second night, he disappeared. Nobody knew what happened to him. And of course, nobody could ask Black Peter about it. You know what happened, don't you? I do. I saw the skipper tie his heels and push him over the rail in the middle of my watch on that dark night. Two days before we sighted the Shetland Lights. Black Peter's a murderer. Aye. But those that know him wouldn't be surprised to hear it. But all this must stay between us. All right? Of course. Back in a second. I'm off to the Yazi. I'll be here with my drink. Here it is. Have you got any tobacco? I've run out of mine. Nah, I lost my pouch. I don't know where. Wait a minute. What's this? Oh, is this your tobacco pouch? Well, oh. Oh, it is. Well, I have to go now. I know a captain who's planning an expedition to Cape Cod. Captain Ahab's his name. He commanded the Pequod. He might need good harpooners. I'll tell him about you. Maybe. If you like, I. I'm done here. It's time to leave. Care to lose another ten shillings?
My archive. I can always consult with it. My archive. I can always consult with it if needed. You met Patrick Cairns, the harpooner. Do you believe he's the murderer? doing here I've done nothing I'm not saying another Mr. Holmes How is he Leave me alone, please. My this is where I keep my post. My analysis table. It is useful for my work. You met Patrick Cairns, the harpooner. Do you believe he's the murderer? Brave Toby. The best nose in the British Empire. You met Patrick Cairns, the harpooner. Do you believe he's the murderer?
This place is not covered with dust, like the rest of the shelf. An object was taken from here. It was larger than a book, a box or a small chest, perhaps. Holmes. I'm not saying I what am I? my archive. I can always consult with it if needed. A map of London and the surrounding area. It could be useful. You met Patrick Cairns, the harpooner. Do you believe he's the murderer?
This is where I keep my post. Great. Holmes. These are the suspect's belongings. I wonder if these are connected. <laughs> now we have the proof that Nelligan's papers were indeed here. It seems that they have vanished, however. Please escort this suspect for interrogation. Tell me, Mr. Nelligan, what exactly were you hoping to find inside Peter Carey's cabin? I... I, I was trying to find some information about my father. I assume you had another purpose, to retrieve the bond certificates. Am I correct? Yes. 
I discovered some time ago that a few of the missing securities had reappeared on the London market. You can imagine my amazement. I spent months trying to find them, and at last I discovered that the original seller had been Captain Peter Carey. These papers, they belong to my family, but I could not find them there. That's all for now. Well, I will see you soon, young man. I'm not saying another... Good afternoon. I must be at the wrong address. I'd like to speak with a ship's captain, a eh? Captain Ahab. Is that you? No. My name is Sherlock Holmes. That detective fella? So, you wanted to see me? That is correct. We need to talk. About what? About Black Peter, who was killed in his own hut with a harpoon. You know, don't you? Yes. Hell. The tobacco pouch. You recognized it. Oh, the sailor. It was you. Unbelievable. Well, fine. I confess. But if you really do know everything, you should also know that I didn't want to kill him. He made me do it. I know. Did you know about this story with the bond certificates? Did you need money? Yeah. I just wanted him to cough up a little silver. I'm out of work, and I thought maybe he could help me. Well, he refused outright, and he insulted me. I reminded him I knew all about that murder he committed at sea in 1883. Then he got mad when I spoke about his treasure. I barely just had time to throw the harpoon at him before he could jump at me with his knife. You know the truth? What will you do now? I ask that you return the bond certificates. Keep some of them. You will need them in your exile. It is better that you leave the country for a few years. And you won't say anything to the police? I will not say anything as long as you return the money. Well, I'll do as you ask. But what about Inspector Lestrade? I will deal with him. Goodbye. It's good that you asked me to come, Mr. Holmes. We do need to talk. About what? What do you mean? Our case, Mr. Holmes. You sent me a message via your little thug. His name is Wiggins, Inspector. Telling me that the case is solved. Well, Mr. Holmes, tell me, who is our murderer and where is he? The morgue. Eh? His name is, or rather was, Pablo Coventrao. He was also on the ship with Peter Carey, and he was a harpooner. I'll tell you everything, Inspector, but do calm down. Mrs. Hudson will bring us tea and orange cake. Orange cake? You're spoiling me, Mr. Holmes. That's my favourite. Ah, Mr. Holmes. Inspector Lestrade told me that I should thank you for clearing my name. He also said that you were waiting for me here. I came as fast as I could. I cannot thank you enough. It is all because of you that this nightmare is finally over. I believe that this belongs to you. My father's securities? Incredible! But how did you get them? It would take far too long to explain. Tell me! This is extraordinary! You are a genius! Then that may serve as an explanation. Goodbye, Mr. Nelligan, and good luck. Goodbye, Mr. Holmes! 
And thank you. A thousand times thank you. This trip to the countryside will be good for you, Holmes. Hmm. As your friend and your doctor, I really do recommend that you give yourself a complete change of scene. Fresh air, brisk walks, bird watching, chopping wood. Sounds intolerant. I mean, certainly it sounds delightful. But you haven't yet told me who your friend is. The one we're going to visit. He is a bee lover. A bee lover? Do you mean that he keeps bees? That must be Mrs. Hudson, bringing the warm cloth that I requested. There is someone to see you, Mr. Holmes. I have no time. Send whoever it is away. Yes, Holmes, I really think we ought to leave now. Mycroft. Oh. Sherlock. Oh, uh, Mr. Holmes? Perhaps you don't remember me. I'm Dr. Watson. Uh, we met at the Diogenes Club a few years ago. I documented our encounter in a short story I gave the title The Greek Interpreter. He does remember you, Watson. My brother remembers everything, and that is why he is so valuable to the government. We're about to depart for the train station. I know. You know? Sherlock, I need your help. There are people who presently threaten both our country and the Crown itself. You must help us with those methods of yours. Need? Help? Those are not words I would readily associate with you, Mycroft. I wrote you a letter, but you did not reply. And this is not about politics. It's about people. People similar to those whom you pretend to defend in your petty detective affairs. Everything is about politics with you, Mycroft. I'm not interested. Have some of your agents, your spies, or worse, undertake this job of yours. You are defending your people, and they have little to do with the people I choose to help, I can assure you. That is the point. You think exactly as they do. Who are they? The Merry Men. He is talking about the Merry Men, a band of idealistic terrorists. Sherlock, do please think about it. They are planning something diabolical. Your country needs you. You need me, Mycroft, and you are not the country. Although if your waistline expands very much further... Mrs. Hudson, tea will not be necessary. Dr. Watson, the train conductor, Mr. Parker, is aware that you will be seven minutes late. You are in the fourth car. The train will be waiting for you. Sherlock... Enjoy your time in Staffordshire, and do please at least write to me on your return. Holmes, please call a cab while I pack my suitcase. We should be late for the...
Watson, I'll hold a cab for us. We leave in five minutes for the station. What a gloomy night. It was warmer inside the waiting hall. Since the station master told us that the train is about to arrive, we should not have to wait very much longer. Yes, at last. Attention! The train is arriving at the station. Please stand well away from the platform edge. I'll take your bags and your blasted archive suitcase. But... Holmes, the headlight. It's faded away. Something is wrong. I can't hear any sound from the incoming train. Excuse me, sir. Can you explain what has happened? I, I don't know. It, it's as if the train vanished into thin air. Holmes, say something. Quick, fetch a lantern and let us take a look. It's too dark. Only fog and rails, nothing else. Uh, there is no use in stumbling around here at night. We will come back tomorrow. Well, here we are again at Evesham Station. We have a full day ahead. Let us begin our investigation. Trains can't just vanish without leaving a trace. It isn't possible. What should we do next, Holmes? First of all, let us examine the area where the train disappeared. place where we saw the train vanish last night. A discarded item, possibly thrown from the train. Railway sleepers, nothing unusual. There are no tracks or footprints on the ground. The rails have not been touched. There's nothing unusual here. There are no signs to indicate that the train ran off the track, nor are there any other traces. There is nothing whatsoever. There are no clues. But then, a negative result is also a result. Oh, I see what you're getting at. No clues and you're smiling. Yes, Watson, I do smile on occasion. This mystery appears very promising. This investigation won't be simple. We shall require a map of the region. Perhaps the station master could lend us one. Good morning. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. Yes, I remember you. I'm Station Master Everett. You were here last night. So, you are Mr. Holmes, the great detective. Will you be investigating what happened? I shall indeed. It is extraordinary that an entire train could disappear like that. 
And to think of all the poor people inside it, the passengers, the driver. Could you please give us any details about the train? Well, there was nothing so very special about it. At least not that I can recall. My memory's not what it used to be. <laughs> However, if you need it, you can have the train composition report. It's inside my office. I would be glad to have a detailed map of the local railway district. But of course, please, take the one that's pinned inside the waiting hall. See you later, my good man. The entire train has disappeared. Holmes, how is it even possible? This map will be useful. locomotive bell. This part is probably from a locomotive. This place serves as a storage area for the station. This part is probably from a locomotive. A new telegram. I think we should meet this, Mr. Robinson. Here is the train set. Telegraph. According to the train composition report, there was a special wagon. What does that entail? That's a highly secure car ordered by a private party. Uh, it is generally to carry something of value. Uh, those wagons have iron walls, you know, without any windows, uh, and they're fitted with a complex key lock. That is important information. Do you know what was inside this particular wagon? Certainly not. No, that's private, and it's not my responsibility to allot the wagons to whoever. Was there anything exceptional about any of the passengers aboard the train? What do you mean? Like officials? Uh, I wouldn't know. Oh, oh, but now that you mention it, yes, there was something. There was a message from Bridlington Station saying that the train had been delayed because of an issue with the passengers. But what kind of problem that they didn't say? 
That is interesting. You mentioned a problem at Bridlington Station. I should like to visit this station. Could you mark it on the local map? Of course. It's a suburban railway station. You might take a cab there. See you later, my good man. Holmes, how is it even possible for a train to disappear? Railway post bags. This is an absolute scandal. It's always the same with these rail companies. No respect for the customer. Please calm down, sir. What is your concern? Concern? What is my concern? I'll tell you what my concern is. Last night, I were on the train, as usual, with my colleague, heading home. Then along came this ridiculous ticket inspector, who started arguing that our tickets were invalid. He made us get off the train, and he was extremely rude about it. Were you aboard the train that vanished last night? Yes. I heard that it disappeared, but I don't care because we would have stopped before then anyway. Our tickets were valid and no doubt about it. And then, to top it all, the ticket inspector pushed everyone else out too, except for a bunch of rich. Well, of course their type don't need a ticket. Can you recall anything more specific about this fortunate group? Well, yes. They were all foreigners. Spanish-looking toffs with snake eyes. Goodbye, sir. Good day to you, sir. Good day. To whom am I speaking? My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is... Are you a representative of this damned railway company? Because I have a complaint. We are not from the railway company. We are... Well, in that case, Mr. Shamrock Flomes, please excuse me. But I'm not in the mood for idle chit-chat at the moment. You must be Mr. Robinson, is that correct? Yes. I am leading the investigation of the disappearing train. It would help if you could answer my questions. Ah, well, all right. I have nothing to hide. I presume it was you who placed the order for the special wagon. Yes. It was to transport my valuable prototype safely to London. My prototype is a revolutionary device. It is capable of producing electricity. I'm a businessman and an engineer. I had already found several potential customers for my invention, but I was very optimistic about the director's board who were traveling on the train last night. You mentioned a director's board. Which company do they own? The Chilean Barcazas Company. I had made an appointment with them. Now they are lost, along with the train and my prototype. What do you know about the Barcazis company? It's a large South American company. They showed a great deal of interest in my prototype, and they seemed wealthy enough to do business with. 
Hmm. This revolutionary machine of yours, was it very valuable? For God's sake, sir. It is priceless. It could change the world we live in. And yet, I was selling it for almost nothing. I am a humanitarian, you see. I do not know if I will ever be able to get over this disaster. I cannot believe that it disappeared with that damned train. Mr. Robinson, could you please clarify? Were you travelling alongside your prototype? Yes, I was. But I had to step off the train. And all because of this stupid station master. I received a telegram declaring that an important person, a Mr. Bromsby, wished to see you in the waiting room. I, I merely informed you of this. Mr. Bromsby is a wealthy gentleman. His interest in my invention was truly unexpected. So yes, of course, I agreed to see him. Unfortunately, he wasn't there. I thought perhaps he might have been delayed, so I chose to wait a while. But despite my requests, the train left the stu- The timetable is strict. We cannot wait any longer. The regulations require the train to be on time. You are an idiot! You will pay for it! I will sue you! The ticket inspector forced all the passengers from the train, except for the directors of the Barcazas Chilean Company. Good day to you, gentlemen. How may I help you? Good day to you, sir. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I am investigating the unfortunate disappearance of last night's train. I see. Uh, I'm Station Master Bertram, but my supervisor has not informed me about this. I do not know if... Uh, do not worry. I have only a few questions. Station Master Everett from Evesham told us that you reported a problem with some passengers last night. Indeed. This train is a regular line for those who work at Nottingham. But yesterday, everyone was asked to get off the train here at my station. I've no idea why, and it delayed the train. But the worst of it is that now I have to deal with two furious passengers who are complaining about the company's service. They stayed here the whole night, but people do not usually pay much attention to the regulations, you see. There are very strict and clear rules. Paragraph 234 of Article 2G-43 states that in the event of a complaint, you must... Yes, yes, thank you. I understand. Apart from the passengers disembarking, did you notice anything else that was unusual last night? I did, and I mentioned it in my report to our higher management on the matter. What was it? Sorry, but I can't tell you. The station master's reports are confidential. Confidential, you say? How long have you been working here? I have worked here long enough to be uh, quite capable of managing a railway station. Apart from the passengers disembarking... I did. What was it? S confidential. I have worked here long enough to be uh, quite capable of managing a railway station. Let me speak frankly, Mr. Bertram. Your age and your lack of confidence in your position are quite apparent. You cannot deny that you have only recently completed your studies. I was at the top of my class. Listen here, young man. I am aware that you wish to protect yourself behind all these regulations, but I represent the law. And you are obstructing the investigation of an important case. I would suggest that you cooperate with Mr. Holmes. Think of your career. Ah, that is... well, I'll tell you everything. First of all, I scolded the ticket inspector, for it was he who asked the passengers to leave the train. It was not his right to do so. He was very rude. And then, later on, I received a most peculiar telegram from my colleague at Chesterfield Station, the next stop along the line. What did the telegram say? Well, that was the peculiar thing. It was almost unreadable. 
It was full of errors and awfully vague. It was hard to understand if the train had correctly passed that station or not. You can read it for yourself. We ought to visit Chesterfield Station. We need to confirm if the station master saw the train or not. policy for Robinson's machine, a significant sum. Don't touch anything, please. Don't touch anything, please. Don't touch anything, please. According to this document, you have insurance for your prototype. Oh, thank God. Where did you find it? Near the telegraph station. I must have lost it when I tried to send a message, which I was prevented from doing. I apologize for that, but regulations state that public access to the telegraph is strictly prohibited. Upon my word, you keep on digging that hole of yours. You have no idea who I am. I see that you kept your grip sack with you. Why don't you leave it in the luggage room? I've had other things to think about. I lost my prototype. And this idiot station master just stands here doing nothing to help. Oh, but... Well, that won't do at all. Station Master, I believe that the regulations state that any passenger luggage should be taken to the luggage room. I'll do it right away, sir. Sorry, sir. This Robinson is quite a character. We should learn more about him. I will not move from here until I receive my refund. This grip sack belongs to Mr. Robinson. I think we should open it, Holmes. This is what they call force majeure. I'll keep watch. Of course. Look, Watson, a bundle of contracts. Very suspicious. We should study them carefully.
an exclusive sales contract. Mr. Robinson is the seller. Yet another exclusive sales contract. Mr. Robinson is the seller. Yet another. Mr. Robinson is the seller. Yet another exclusive sales contract. Mr. Robinson is the seller. Well, it is very clear that this Mr. Robinson received prepayments from various people for his machine. I will not move from here until I receive... It's a scandal! This bin is full of empty bottles. A fishing advertisement. A telegraph. I had thought that all station masters knew the Morse code, but apparently not. How could he fall asleep at work like this? Excuse me, sir. Wake up. Ah, his breath. He must have swallowed half a distillery. And that explains the how. By his sleeping off the alcohol, you mean. Wake up, please, huh. sir. What? The 18-hour 72 train has arrived? Good day to you. We are investigating the disappearance of last night's train, and we should like to ask you a few questions. Were there any passengers who got off that particular train at your station last night? No. Nobody, it seems to me. Although I did not leave my office, so... No doubt you were very busy. You don't say. You can't ever get any peace around here. Now nah, you have to send a telegram each time a train arrives and departs. Oop. Station Master Bertram from Bridlington showed me a strange telegram that he received from you last night. It concerned the train, but it was barely comprehensible. What? 
He's a fastidious little twerp, that Bertram. I remember everything quite clearly. It was late, and I was tired, but I did my work. So what? There's no need to be so petty. You were not tired, you were inebriated. Tell me the truth now, or I shall not hesitate to document your state in my report. My friend means that you will end up by being sacked from your position. All right. So I was drunk. I don't remember all of yesterday, to be truthful to you. Please don't go harsh on me. Holmes, this man has consumed a considerable amount of alcohol. He's not entirely helpless yet, but... It will not be long before he is. Obviously, his testimony cannot be trusted.